Over the years, Hollywood has produced quite a number of icons, and Elizabeth Taylor happens to be one of the most prominent. Outside the unforgettable roles that she has played in several productions, she has also appealed to many because of her beauty. But despite these milestones, the best of her legacy rests outside her own career. Currently, her grandchildren have taken after her, leaving marks in the entertainment industry and beyond. Some have also gotten strongly invested in social and humanitarian courses that Elizabeth pioneered. In this video, we will take you through how Elizabeth's generation has remained invested in her legacy. But first, we will start from where it all began. Elizabeth Rosemond Taylor was born on February 27, 1932, in Hampstead, London, England, to American parents, Frances Len Taylor and Sarah Southern. Her father was an art dealer, and her mother was a former stage actress. Elizabeth, known affectionately as Liz, showed signs of star quality from an early age. Her dark, enchanting eyes, framed by a double row of eyelashes due to a genetic mutation, made her stand out even as a child. The outbreak of World War II prompted the Taylor family to return to the United States, settling in Los Angeles in 1939. It was here that young Elizabeth's extraordinary talents began to draw attention. Although her formal education was sporadic due to her burgeoning acting career, she attended Hawthorne School in Beverly Hills. Her mother's connections in the acting world facilitated Elizabeth's introduction to Hollywood, and it wasn't long before her remarkable beauty and presence led to screen tests and roles. Elizabeth Taylor's entry into Hollywood was marked by her signing with Universal Pictures at the tender age of nine. Her first role was in the 1942 film, There's One Born Every Minute, but it was her subsequent contract with MGM that truly launched her career. Her breakthrough came with the film Lassie Come Home in 1943, where her performance as Priscilla delighted audiences and critics alike. This role showcased her innate acting ability and marked the beginning of a legendary career. Taylor's rise to fame was swift and unrelenting. In 1944, she starred in National Velvet, a film about a girl who trains her horse to win the Grand National. Her portrayal of Velvet Brown was both heartwarming and compelling, earning her widespread acclaim and solidifying her status as a rising star. At just 12 years old, Elizabeth Taylor had become a household name. Throughout her teenage years, Elizabeth continued to take on significant roles that showcased her versatility as an actress. Films like Courage of Lassie in 1946, Life with Father in 1947, and Little Women in 1949 demonstrated her ability to handle a variety of genres. By the time she was a teenager, Elizabeth Taylor was not just a starlet, but a bona fide star with an impressive resume. The 1950s were a pivotal decade for Elizabeth Taylor, marked by several career-defining performances. Her role in A Place in the Sun in 1951, opposite Montgomery Clift, was particularly notable, earning her critical acclaim and an Academy Award nomination. Taylor's performance as Angela Vickers was praised for its depth and sophistication, marking her transition from child star to serious actress. In 1956, Taylor starred in Giant, alongside James Dean and Rock Hudson. Her role as Leslie Benedict further cemented her reputation as a talented and versatile actress. The film was a massive success and showcased Taylor's ability to hold her place against some of Hollywood's most prominent leading men. Elizabeth Taylor's career continued to soar with her portrayal of Maggie Pollitt in Cat on a Hot Tin Roof in 1958 and her performance in Suddenly Last Summer in 1959 which earned her another Academy Award nomination. However, it was her role in Butterfield 8 in 1960 that won her her first Academy Award for Best Actress. Her portrayal of Gloria Wandress was both powerful and poignant, reflecting her immense talent and emotional depth. Outside these roles, she has had so many other fine moments on screen. One of the most defining moments of Taylor's career was her role as Cleopatra in the 1963 film of the same name. The production was notorious for its extravagant budget and tumultuous filming process, but Taylor's performance was mesmerizing. Her on-screen chemistry with Richard Burton, who played Mark Antony, K. 
captivated audiences and led to a highly publicized off-screen romance. The couple's relationship was as legendary as it was tumultuous, and their on-again, off-again marriage captivated the public for years. Despite the controversies, Taylor and Burton's partnership resulted in several successful films, including Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? in 1966, which earned Taylor her second Academy Award for Best Actress. Elizabeth Taylor continued to work in film and television throughout the 1970s and 1980s, although her focus increasingly shifted towards her philanthropic efforts. She became a passionate advocate for AIDS research and awareness, founding the Elizabeth Taylor AIDS Foundation in 1991. Her tireless work in this area earned her numerous accolades and cemented her legacy as a humanitarian. Throughout her life, Elizabeth Taylor faced numerous personal challenges, including health issues, tumultuous relationships, and struggles with addiction. However, her resilience and determination to overcome these obstacles only added to her legendary status. With regard to personal life, nothing drew more attention than her marital history. She was married eight times to seven different men, with each marriage attracting significant media attention. Elizabeth Taylor, the legendary actress known for her stunning beauty and remarkable talent, also garnered significant attention for her complex and often tumultuous marital history. Over her lifetime, Taylor married eight times to seven different men, each relationship marked by its own set of unique stories and dramas. Let's take an in-depth look at Elizabeth Taylor's marriages and the children she had with her husbands. Elizabeth Taylor's first marriage was to Nikki Hilton Jr., heir to the Hilton Hotel fortune. They married on May 6, 1950, when Taylor was just 18 years old. The marriage was heavily publicized and depicted as a fairy tale union. However, the reality was far from the public perception. Hilton's abusive behavior and heavy drinking quickly soured the relationship. Taylor filed for divorce after only eight months, citing mental cruelty. She also highlighted that she was too young to be married then and had to give herself more time before getting married. They had no children together at the time the couple parted ways. But despite this first sour experience with marriage, Elizabeth wasn't willing to give in to her bad fortune she would soon take another shot at love. The second husband was British actor Michael Wilding. They married on February 21, 1952. At 20, Taylor was almost 20 years younger than Wilding, who was 39. Despite the age difference, their marriage was initially happy, and they had two sons together, Michael Howard Wilding, who was born in 1953, and Christopher Edward Wilding, born in 1955. However, Taylor's rising fame and Wilding's career decline strained their relationship. Sadly, their marriage couldn't weather the storm, and they divorced in 1957. Taylor's third marriage was to producer Mike Todd, whom she married on February 2, 1957. This marriage was notably passionate and intense. They had one daughter, Elizabeth Frances Todd, born 1957. But unlike other marriages that failed due to the couple's differences, the story behind this one was really sad. Tragically, Mike Todd died in a plane crash on March 22, 1958, after just over a year of marriage. His death deeply affected Taylor, and she often described him as one of the loves of her life. Maybe this marriage would have lasted longer than others, but this is something we never got the opportunity to witness. So, once again, Elizabeth is alone and continues to seek the joy of companionship which leads her into another marriage. However, the next marriage didn't enjoy the support others had from the public. In fact, a lot of people saw it as a betrayal of the memory of Elizabeth's late husband. Elizabeth Taylor's fourth marriage was to singer Eddie Fisher, who was her late husband's best friend and married to actress Debbie Reynolds at the time. The affair and subsequent marriage to Fisher on May 12, 1959 caused a major scandal. They did not have any children together. Their marriage faced many challenges, including public backlash, and Fisher's struggle to support Taylor through her grief over Todd's death. Taylor's infatuation with her next co-star would eventually lead to their divorce in 1964. Still not giving up, Elizabeth went on to get involved in her next marriage, which later had an on-and-off situation. 
Taylor's fifth and sixth marriages were to the same man, Welsh actor Richard Burton. They first married on March 15, 1964. The couple met while filming Cleopatra and their passionate affair quickly became one of the most famous romances of the 20th century. Their relationship was intense, characterized by both deep love and frequent fights. They adopted a daughter, Maria Burton, who was born in 1961. Despite their undeniable chemistry, their marriage was plagued by alcohol abuse and infidelity. They divorced in 1974 but remarried on October 10, 1975. The reconciliation was short-lived and they divorced again in 1976. The marriage was just not destined to hold. Moving on to Taylor's seventh marriage, it was to John Warner, a Republican politician who later became a U.S. Senator. They married on December 4, 1976. Taylor tried to adapt to the life of a politician's wife, but the transition was difficult. Feeling unfulfilled and isolated, she turned to alcohol and prescription drugs. They had no children together and they divorced on November 7, 1982. Elizabeth Taylor's eighth and final marriage was to Larry Fortensky, a construction worker she met during her stay at the Betty Ford Clinic. They married on October 6, 1991, at Michael Jackson's Neverland Ranch in a highly publicized ceremony. Despite their different backgrounds, they shared a bond over their recovery struggles. However, the pressures of media scrutiny and lifestyle differences led to their divorce in 1996. They also ended up having no children together, and Elizabeth finally decided that she was done with marriage. In all these ups and downs, there was a silver lining to everything. Elizabeth's children, in whom she found her solace. Elizabeth Taylor had four children throughout her marriages. Two sons with Michael Wilding, a daughter with Mike Todd, and an adopted daughter with Richard Burton. Her children are Michael Howard Wilding, Christopher Edward Wilding, Elizabeth Frances Todd, and Maria Burton. Despite her turbulent personal life, Taylor remained a devoted mother, and her children often described her as loving and supportive. Elizabeth Taylor's marital history is a testament to her enduring quest for love and companionship. Each marriage brought its own set of challenges and joys, shaping her into the resilient and compassionate woman she was known to be. Her life, marked by both cinematic triumphs and personal tribulations, continues to captivate and inspire. In her later years, Elizabeth Taylor remained a beloved figure in Hollywood and beyond. She made occasional appearances in films and on television, but her primary focus was on her charitable work. Elizabeth Taylor passed away on March 23, 2011, at the age of 79. Her death marked the end of an era, but her legacy as one of Hollywood's greatest stars endures. Elizabeth Taylor's life and career were nothing short of extraordinary. From her early days as a child star to her status as a Hollywood legend, Taylor's journey was marked by immense talent, resilience, and an unwavering commitment to her craft. Her contributions to film and her philanthropic efforts have left an indelible mark on the world, ensuring that her legacy will be remembered for generations to come. Despite being dead, her legacy lives on. When we take a look at her family, we get to see her influence on the career choices of even her grandchildren, who have decided to honor the memories of their grandmother. To the world, we saw an icon due to her performances on television. But to her children and grandchildren, Elizabeth was just a mother and grandmother, and a good one at that. Elizabeth Taylor, a Hollywood icon and humanitarian, left behind a legacy not only in film, but also in her philanthropic efforts, particularly her advocacy for HIV AIDS awareness. Her grandchildren have taken up the mantle in various ways, contributing to the continuation of her remarkable legacy. Here's a closer look at how Taylor's grandchildren have carried on her legacy, highlighting those in entertainment and those dedicated to her HIV awareness programs. Elizabeth Taylor became deeply invested in HIV AIDS awareness due to her close friendship with actor Rock Hudson, one of the first major Hollywood figures to die from an AIDS-related illness in 1985. Hudson's battle with the disease and subsequent death brought the crisis into the public eye and profoundly affected Taylor. Witnessing the stigma, misinformation, and lack of support surrounding HIV-AIDS, she felt compelled to take action. 
Taylor leveraged her fame and resources to advocate for those suffering from the disease. She co-founded the American Foundation for AIDS Research in 1985 and established the Elizabeth Taylor AIDS Foundation in 1991. Through these organizations, Taylor raised millions of dollars for research, treatment, and education efforts. Her tireless work helped to destigmatize HIV AIDS and brought much needed attention and resources to the cause. Taylor's commitment to HIV AIDS advocacy remains a significant part of her enduring legacy. Her grandchildren would not let her work be in vain. They have taken up the challenge and continued in that line. Naomi DeLuce Wilding, one of Elizabeth Taylor's granddaughters from her son Michael Wilding Jr., has been actively involved in carrying on her grandmother's philanthropic legacy. Naomi is a prominent advocate for HIV AIDS awareness and serves on the board of the Elizabeth Taylor AIDS Foundation ETF. Her work with the foundation has been instrumental in raising funds and awareness for HIV AIDS research and support. Naomi's commitment to this cause reflects her grandmother's passion for humanitarian work and dedication to making a difference in the lives of those affected by the disease. Layla Wilding, another granddaughter from Michael Wilding Jr., has also been deeply involved with the Elizabeth Taylor AIDS Foundation. Layla serves as an ambassador for ETAF and works closely with the organization to promote awareness and education about HIV AIDS. Her efforts in public speaking and advocacy helps to keep Elizabeth Taylor's mission alive, ensuring that her grandmother's work continues to impact communities around the world. Layla's dedication to this cause demonstrates a profound respect for her grandmother's legacy and a commitment to social responsibility. What about Quinn Tyvey, the son of Liza Todd and one of Elizabeth Taylor's grandsons? He has followed in his grandmother's footsteps in both the arts and philanthropy. Quinn is a co-trustee of the Elizabeth Taylor Trust and a co-chair of the Elizabeth Taylor AIDS Foundation. His involvement with ETAF includes overseeing the foundation's initiatives, fundraising efforts, and global outreach programs. Additionally, Quinn has pursued a career in the arts, working as a filmmaker and artist. His dual dedication to both his creative passions and his grandmother's humanitarian legacy illustrates the multifaceted impact of Elizabeth Taylor's influence on her family. Moving on to Tarquin Wilding, another of Michael Wilding Jr.'s sons, he has pursued a career in entertainment, much like his iconic grandmother. Tarquin is an actor and filmmaker, having worked on various projects in the industry. His involvement in the arts showcases the continuation of the Taylor family's connection to Hollywood and the entertainment world. Tarquin's work reflects the artistic talent that Elizabeth Taylor was renowned for, and his contributions to the field helped to keep the family's legacy alive in the realm of cinema and storytelling. Reese Tivy, another grandson from Liza Todd, is a talented musician and trumpeter. He has performed at various events and venues, showcasing his musical abilities. While Reese has not been as prominently involved in the entertainment industry as some of his cousins, his artistic pursuits still echo the creative spirit of his grandmother. Additionally, Reese has been involved with the Elizabeth Taylor AIDS Foundation, supporting its mission and participating in fundraising efforts. His contributions to both the arts and philanthropy highlight the diverse ways in which Elizabeth Taylor's legacy continues through her grandchildren. There is also Elizabeth Carson, the daughter of Christopher Wilding, who has also made her mark in the world. While she has not pursued a career in entertainment or been as publicly involved in the Elizabeth Taylor AIDS Foundation, her presence at various family events and her support for her cousin's efforts indicate a shared commitment to upholding the family's legacy. Elizabeth Carson's involvement, though more private, underscores the importance of family unity in continuing the philanthropic and artistic traditions established by Elizabeth Taylor. Elizabeth Taylor's grandchildren have embraced various aspects of her legacy. From the arts to philanthropy, Naomi DeLuce Wilding and Layla Wilding have been especially active in HIV AIDS awareness, continuing the vital work their grandmother started with the Elizabeth Taylor AIDS Foundation. Quinn Tyvey and Tarquin Wilding have pursued careers in entertainment, showcasing their artistic talents and maintaining the family's connection to Hollywood. Reese Tyvey's musical career and support for ETF further highlight the diverse ways in which Taylor's grandchildren honor her memory. 
Together, they ensure that Elizabeth Taylor's legacy of talent, compassion, and advocacy lives on for future generations. Be kind to share any other thing you know about the Hollywood legend in the comments. We have more upcoming videos. Like and subscribe so that you don't miss a thing.